Hong Kong is an international finance center with a thriving banking and finance sector. Let's briefly learn about Hong Kong's banking system in this video. Hong Kong maintains a three-tier system of deposit-taking institutions, namely licensed banks, restricted licensed banks, and deposit-taking companies. If we have time to name some banks operating in Hong Kong, I believe that most of you would think about those large banks like HSBC, Standard Chartered, and Hang Seng Bank. These most common banks we see in daily life are all licensed banks. Licensed banks or commercial banks can accept deposits of all types including current, savings, and time deposits. They can also issue negotiable certificates of deposit. Licensed banks can help us with deposits of any kind, any amount, and any maturity period. On the other hand, there are certain limitations on the types, amounts, and maturity periods of deposits that restricted licensed banks and deposit-taking companies can accept. Restricted license banks can only accept time deposits of at least 500,000 Hong Kong dollars or issue negotiable certificates of deposit. However, they can't accept any current or savings deposits. You may have heard of investment banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. These are actually examples of restricted license banks. Just like restricted license banks, deposit-taking companies can only accept time deposits and issue negotiable certificates of deposit. Yet, these deposit-taking companies are restricted to taking deposits of 100,000 Hong Kong dollars or more with a maturity of at least three months. Octopus Cards Limited and Prime Credit are two examples of deposit-taking companies that we may be more familiar with. Other than the three kinds of banks, we just mentioned. Usually, there is a central bank in every country or region. For example, there's the Federal Reserve System in the US and the People's Bank of China in the PRC. They all play a completely different role compared to ordinary commercial banks. In Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority serves as the de facto central bank of the region. In general, a central bank serves five main functions, being the government's banker, being the lender of last resort, supervising the banking system, issuing currencies, and implementing monetary policies. First, as the government's banker and financial consultant, the central bank is responsible for providing opinions to the government on monetary, banking, and finance-related matters. Normally, the fiscal reserves of a country are managed by the corresponding central bank with an aim to ensure the country's financial stability. Take Hong Kong as an example. Our fiscal reserves, otherwise known as the exchange fund, are managed by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Second, the central bank acts as the bank of banks, keeping the cash reserves of deposit-taking institutions. In most countries, deposit-taking institutions are required to keep a certain percentage of their deposits in their accounts opened in the central bank. These reserves are collectively managed by the central bank to ensure liquidity in the banking system. In case of a financial crisis or a bank run, the central bank would serve as the lender of last resort and provide short-term loans to the banks facing liquidity strains. Third, the central bank is responsible for supervising the banking system's operations as well as ensuring a safe, stable, and effective banking system. As the supervision authority of the banking sector, the central bank will ensure banks are following various regulations and will impose punishments on offenders. The fourth responsibility of the central bank is to issue currencies. The legal tender of a currency is usually designed and issued by the central bank. For example, the US dollar is issued by the Federal Reserve's banks, while the renminbi is issued by the People's Bank of China. In Hong Kong, all coins and $10 notes are issued by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, while banknotes of other amounts are issued by the three commercial banks, namely HSBC, Standard Chartered, and Bank of China. Last but not least, the central bank is also responsible for the implementation of monetary policies. By means like controlling interest rates and reserve ratios, a central bank pursues different economic goals such as lowering price levels and stimulating economic growth. 
We'll talk about this more later. After having an overview of various types of banks, let's look at the money supply of an economic system in the next video.